Hi, I'm Greg, your car angel. The Chevy Volt is one of the more unique cars you're going to find out on the road. And in this video, I want to talk about what makes the Volt so interesting and how it came to be. Now, the Volt was the car that GM was pinning high hopes on to prove to the world that they could build and actually sell a reliable and affordable EV. Its design is unusual and it has a small generator engine which powers the battery pack. But was the world ready for that? What makes the Volt such an unusual car? Why has it been discontinued? And finally, is it a good used car for you to buy? But let's start with its humble beginnings. The Volt has a long history going back to the 1960s. And I'd be mistaken if I didn't give credit to the earlier EV projects, including the Electrover, which was based on the dreadful Corvair chassis. Now these uh, were not ready for prime time with the batteries, but the next project that came along was the Sun Racer project, which made the original EV1 possible, which in turn spawned the Volt. Now the Sun Racer project was a small $75,000 program that allowed GM engineers to design and build an oddly shaped car named the Sun Racer. In 1987, GM, as well as 22 other teams, entered their cars into a 2,000-mile Australian competition for cars that ran strictly on solar power. The Sun Racer easily won the Solar Challenge race. Now the EV1 and the Volt came directly out of that project. GM took the engineering accomplishments of that car and went to work on an ambitious plan to create the very first mass-produced electric car called the EV1. Now the EV1 was a car that planted the hopeful seeds in the minds of many forward-looking car enthusiasts. And it was a foreshadowing of the future. It's actually unlikely that we would have any electric cars on the road right now if it were not for the original EV1. In fact, Elon Musk himself claims that Tesla was founded in response to GM's killing the EV1 program. For GM though, it was an unmitigated commercial failure and they crushed all but 40 of these fine cars, which were only ever available for lease. But before returning their EVs in at lease end, the owners actually held a funeral and that was the sad ending of the EV1. And I'm actually serious about that. There was an EV1 procession and it was led by a hearse. Maybe it was because of the failure in the minds of their eco-minded customers that GM jumped right back into the ring for round two and created the Volt. Now this would be the car that would remake GM's image in those same minds that were so disappointed with GM's failure with the EV1. The prototype debuted in 2007 at the North American Auto Show and it was introduced as a boldly designed range extended electric car that would compete with the Nissan LEAF. The production model lost a bit of design boldness when compared to the prototype, but it retained the engineering that GM had promised. The first generation ran between the years 2011 to 2015. The 2011 model featured 35 miles per charge in a total range of 320 miles. There was a mid-cycle upgrade in 2013 and the range increased to 38 miles per charge with an improved battery pack. The Volt is different from other hybrid cars such as the Prius, which has a traditional gas engine and transmission being assisted by a battery pack. The Volt essentially turns that upside down by being an EV first, assisted by a gas engine that operates a generator with no transmission. Once the battery pack reaches a low threshold on the Volt, the generator kicks in and begins recharging the batteries. The result is a car that drives like a pure EV. Just like the EV1, the Volt was designed with a T-shaped battery pack configuration. Now the advent of a flat skateboard battery pack such as what Tesla was using was not integrated and this had the unfortunate result of the first gen Volt being only a four seater and that might be a deal killer for a lot of people. The battery pack that was used however featured cooling fins between the 288 cells that were used and this in turn provided superior thermal management which the likes of the Nissan LEAF did not have. 
The Volt also has a built-in buffer to keep the batteries more in the sweet spot of their capacity, which is what lithium ion batteries love. The result is that the Volt batteries are ultra reliable and have very little degradation over time. The Volt batteries were warranted for eight years or 100,000 miles, but it was widely expected to last 10 years and 150,000 miles. In fact, there are many Volt owners who have blown well past 200,000 miles with the original battery pack still going strong with minimal degradation. Now the Leaf batteries, on the other hand, would be plagued by severe power loss and prove themselves to be unreliable due to a poor thermal design. Now it's kudos to GM for putting battery longevity as a high priority. Battery pack reliability, it turns out, is one of the many strengths of the Volt design. However, the weakness and notably the ugliest part of the Volt would have to be the center stack with a bewildering array of soft touch buttons. For instance, if you look at the dashboard from the back seat, it actually looks like it has chicken pox. There's so many buttons on the center stack. Now, when you get closer, you'll see items like TP, whatever that stands for, configure, source. All of these are a little bit vague and a lot of times they're hard to work. Yes, you can figure it out if you take the time, but it is not intuitive and it looks and operates like it came off of an old first generation Panasonic microwave oven. The bulky shift selector is overkill and a complete waste of space. GM was obviously catering to their tried and true base by not making the driving experience feel any different than their other cars. The awkward placement of the master control for power door locks was a mistake by placing it in the center stack rather than in the door panel where it belongs. Another weakness in the first generation is the rear seats. Now don't count on having any friends sit back there while you drive. Unless you're very short and have the front seats in their shortest position, your friends will not be able to fit their legs behind the front seats. The front seats, however, are really comfortable and feel great on long trips. The Volt has a visibility problem. And as a driver, you're going to find that this A-pillar being as thick as it is, is really an obstruction to seeing cars that are there, right? It's a very thick A-pillar and it can get into your sight line very easily. Another area of visibility concern is in the rear view mirror. And you'll see that this portion of the molding on the headliner here gets in the way of the actual part of the mirror. Uh, I should be able to see a full window back there, but I can't because this is actually in the way. So that's not a good design, especially for people who are tall like myself. And finally, the only other thing I really can complain about is the dreadful rear view camera that is virtually useless at night. And that's when you really need it the most, especially when it is paired up with the low brightness level of the incandescent backup light. This problem can easily be remedied by putting a high intensity LED in the backup light which really takes only 15 minutes. And that alone helps a lot. Now here you have the backup light that is factory on the left and you have the new LED backup light on the right. And you can see a difference between the two. To access the LED bulbs, you simply have to go in from the underside with the two bolts and replace that light. The whole driving experience of the first gen Volt is very rewarding. Acceleration is smooth and powerful due to the EV nature of the powertrain. Instant torque, quiet cabin, solid braking, low center of gravity, all make the Volt an exciting car to drive when compared to the Prius or the Leaf. It feels solid, safe, and well-built and not tinny like so many other cars in this class. While these cars represent different years of the first generation, I now want to move on to the second generation, which debuted in 2016 as an upgrade to the original Volt. Now, many Volt owners swear by their first gen, but there were major improvements in this next generation Volt. It was taller, longer, wider, had better ground clearance, and more passenger room than the first generation. The hideous dash was totally redesigned on the new Volt with more intuitive features and the backup camera was improved to a high definition unit. 
but most importantly, it had a significantly better range with 53 miles to a charge. The genius of the second gen is that it uses 20% less battery, but returns substantially more EV miles than the previous generation. Small improvements like the locking mechanism being located on the driver's side panel rather than the center stack, an integrated charge door light which helps at night, two levels of regenerative braking, five passenger seating, and a stronger powertrain made this Volt a better car. Unfortunately, the design was based on the Chevy Cruze and it lost that funky first generation design and it really looks like any other car on the road. The one distinguishing feature on the second generation is the front and it has so much chrome, it looks like it just went to the orthodontist and got braces. Adaptive cruise control was an option on the 2019 models, which is why I think the 2019 model is the best year of the second generation. Another little known added feature was that the brake lights now illuminate when the regenerative braking occurs. Now this safety feature alerts the drivers behind you that you are slowing down even though you're technically not applying the brake pedal. Another safety feature is the sound the Volt makes when driving slowly. It can be pretty annoying and loud and if you don't see any use for this, it can be disabled easily by removing the F5 fuse in the fuse box. Now it was a great disappointment to many when in 2020 GM again announced that they were going to ax the EV from their lineup. And to their credit, GM has committed to having 30 new electric vehicles by 2025 using the new Altium platform. Now obviously the Volt did not fit into that future plan, but it still remains a classic game changer that helped the evolution of the electric vehicle transformation. The Volt was and still is an unusual design. It's a masterful piece of electric vehicle engineering that serves as a reliable, but most importantly, an affordable transition car for people wanting to reduce their carbon footprint, save on gas, and eventually buy a pure EV. In fact, you can pick up a used Volt for five to $10,000 with plenty of life left on it. I'm Greg, your car angel. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.